Um, well, I'm glad you all stuck around to hear this, um, hear my uh, how, how to price websites like a pro. For those of you who heard my talk the other yesterday, it was just yesterday, it seems like a long time ago, um, I was t uh, referring to this, and today I'm going to try to go through the main process of the pricing websites like a pro so that we can actually get into showing you the automated website cost estimator, which is kind of like the cherry on the top. Um, so I'm Judy Knight, and I'm a clinical psychologist by training and a serial entrepreneur. Uh, 11 years ago, I sold a software company that I was running, medical records software company. Didn't know what I was going to do after that, but I knew I didn't want to be a psychologist. And I ended up starting uh, to do WordPress websites for clients. And um, then uh, now I have a, a little agency. Um, it wasn't like a straight shot yesterday. I kind of told you you know, there's a time where you get to be in the Bermuda Triangle of web designer hell, but I started a WordPress meetup to coordinate and to kind of curate my education back in the day, and that meetup now in Atlanta has 3,500 people, members. But, so that's a little bit about me. I also, out of wanting to help people not go through what I went through, which is like, you know, floundering around in that place where you're, you know what you don't, you, do, you know you're not great, but you don't know how to get to the pro level, is I started a course, a four-month course um, with coaching that uh, for aspiring and struggling web designers to learn to price, close, build, and deliver effective websites. And in doing that, that's where I decided my students needed help pricing the sites. So I created this little pricing websites like a pro with the, word, the website cost estimator, and I started using it with my clients just to test it out, and they loved it. So this whole process, that's where it came from. And um, if I wanted to give you this little freebie before, in case you have to leave at the end or if I get carried away and forget to tell you, uh, if you text the word WordPress Pro, and I say word, all one word, to 66866. Um, you'll get my weekly tips that I send out, a newsletter, and you'll get the pricing websites like a pro PDF with the paper versions, word and P word version and a PDF version of the pricing websites like a pro. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Judy Knight. So um, are most of you freelancers? And you know how tricky an issue the pricing is. And if you don't do it right, if you underprice it, you are in for all sorts of surprises and it, you, it's terrible. You, you feel like you can't come back and charge a client for more and then you end up having to finish the site. You know the drill. And so not accurately pricing, assessing the scope and pricing costs you time and money and that's one of the reasons, having been burned like that, we go into panic mode, right, when we have to price a site. So there's no right way to do it. You've heard a lot of people over the last couple of days talk about how they do it. And it's different with large agencies. And if you're dealing with a really large client, then what I'm going to tell you isn't the way I would do it. But if you're dealing with middle size, you know, small businesses where there's one to three people that are decision makers, then this is a good thing, a good process to follow. But there's still no exact right way. It really depends on a lot about your situation. But what I've done is created like this little five-step process. It's in a PDF that you'll get if you use that 66866 number. Um, where it talks about how to go about setting yourself up for success first um, in order to find that accurate and fair price. So before you even start pricing things, you have to do your homework. You have to be prepared. And one of the things you have to do is have a really great website yourself. 
How many people out here, you free freelancers, have a really great website yourself? Raise your hands. One, <laughs> or are you modest? <laughs> but that is not unusual. How can you price a website for decent money if your own doesn't represent the type of work you do or the quality, you know, uh, doesn't sell yourself? Because so, so many of you say, well, I'm selling to friends and family and people I know and referrals. Well, hello, those referrals are going to look you up. And they might have gotten more than one referral. And if they have, you want to have your website outshine the other ones. We just got a huge contract. Person looked us up from Google. They were looking for a local agency that wasn't a big agency. And she said, you wouldn't believe how many bad websites there are out there for web designers. I said, oh, yes, I would. And, you know, it really helps, you know, helps make, helps us close more business because our other people aren't doing a good job at that. So go home today and put that on your to-do list. So you really have to know who your clients are, what you can do for them, your range of services you provide, how to write your brand story. If, if, I, if you weren't in my talk the other day, go to storybrand.com and look at Donald Miller's stuff about how to do a brand story. It will give you the way to talk to a client so that they will know that you're going to do a website that is better than the guy that says, show me three websites you like, and I'll build you one. That's not going to work either to get the higher prices. So you need to really feel like and do the work that you have to do, looking at user experience research, you know, reading, whatever you have to do, so you feel confident that you're going to be able to do a really great website because you can't sell it if you can't sell it. If you don't have confidence in yourself, you're not going to be able to sell what you do. I always tell people, if they're able to sell in person, I tell these, this to my clients, then, and most of them are. If you have somebody that's in business, they can sell in person. But I say we have to then bottle that and how, whatever you do in person, we're going to make that appear on the website. And um, the problem is, if you're selling to friends and family, you don't really have to do that, right? You're just like, you're the only guy they know that does a website. And they're going to pick you, and you're going to be ending up working for $1,500, and you're not going to ever get out of the Bermuda Triangle of web designer hell. So um, get yourself a great website. Then... The first thing you do is you do a free phone call. And that free phone call is 10 minutes. The entire purpose of that 10 minute phone call is to qualify the lead. You, qual you ask them questions about themselves and what kind of website they have now and da 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 da. You ask them how much are you planning to spend. Just ask them. And if it seems like a fit, then keep them on the phone a little longer talk a little more. The whole purpose of the next part of that first phone call is to sign them up for a free, con uh, not a free consultation, a paid consultation. It doesn't have to be a lot. I just charge $150 because at the end of this call, they'll say, well, what are the next steps? I'll say, oh, the next step, for the first step for anyone that we work with is for us to do a talk it out session and that cost $150. Now I have them come to our office for two reasons. A, I'm busy and I don't wanna drive all over Atlanta to meet with people who don't have any investment yet in me. Much better to have them pay $150 and they drive through the traffic to come to me. And when they have the skin in the game, you're already this much further closer to the sale. So you, you hear, you know, you might think that when you do something nice for people, they'll like you more. It actually works the other way. When somebody does something nice for you, they like you more. So have them come across town 
and meet with you. Now, if you have a shitty office, excuse me, um, then maybe that's not the thing to invite them to your office. But if you have an office where you're proud of and a team you're proud of or whatever, then you want them to get to know you and your team. Like that was what somebody in, in one of the talks yesterday said was his client said, we like you because of your team. So if you have a team, then use it and have them get to know you and your team. People like to know you have a team. However, if you're a one person, then own that too and just let them know that you do what you say, you say what you do, you'll not like make them wait and you'll get back to them all the time. Get that out of the way. So once you've got them into your paid consultation, the whole paid consultation is really about them. Just dig into their business. What's your biggest revenue? What are your goals? What things do you, have you done before? What kind of marketing do you do? Just ask a million questions. And they'll feel great that you might not think you know anything about business. It doesn't matter. What you do need to know is you need to be curious about their business so you can start to see what it's going to take to tell their story, their, really their story about how they're going to help their client, how you're going to process telling their story. It really isn't their story, their story about how, what they're going to do for their client. And, you know, that's what... That's what you're going to need to do is focus on them. So um, you can't just go and ask them to show you three websites that they like and tell them, well, I can build you one like this. You know, you might want to ask them about the websites they like later, but that's only to get more you know, into discovery and find out kind of what they do like and what they don't like. But, Definitely in this paid consultation, you want to get enough information from them that you really, um, you give them some information about how you might think about what's it going to take to bottle their secret sauce and get them to be able to sell online like they do in person. So you also, like I said, well, I said that in terms of if you're a single person, but if you're even a... Um, an agency or a single person, then you also let them know how you work and get that out of the way. You know, what is your communication style? How long will it take? How do you do the payments? Just talk about that all up front so they feel comfortable. And then if you've done a good job in those two meetings, then the moment of truth arrives and they'll say, well, how much will that cost? And that's when most everybody goes, oh, well. Let me go out to the parking lot and see what kind of car they're driving or something. That's what they think you're going to do. So that's where I did, did, um, uh, created the website cost estimator. And so I'm going to get out of PowerPoint and show you. Um, let's see. How can I get out of PowerPoint? So, um, take a glass of water. So, um, this is our pricing websites like a pro module um, in, the, in my course. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. Hold on just a second. Um, let's see. So, it's not showing up? Okay. Um, Where's Michael when I need him? Uh, hmm. So does anybody know how to do this? Dwayne? I'm trying to get it to work. I'm trying to bring up the um, Firefox instead of um, this. Pardon? What's open? I, see, I can't see what it's... Which isn't up here, it would be this. I do. Oh, okay. Mirror displays. Is that doing it? Okay, thank you. I see I can't see what's happening up there. Ah. 
get rid of that, and get rid of that. Okay, now can you see this? <sighs> it's hard enough doing a talk, much less having to deal with the technology of it. Okay, so um, I'm going to go down here and to the website cost estimator. So I did this like I said, come on. It's trying. Um, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Can you guys see that? So it's gravity form, and I did this, uh, like I said, in practice with my clients, and they really liked it. So um, it was fun. So what I did was, so how I do this, and I'll just kind of do a little demo of, okay, like, are you, um, what kind of site this is? Is this a, a little refresh? Is it a whole new website? Is it just a little itty-bitty biz or exactly what? And then say this is a uh, new website. So I click that, and it is now they've got $1,000 here. How, much, how many decision makers will there be? Oh, only one? Well, that doesn't add anything to the price. Oh, let me make this smaller because you can't see that it's adding it up, I, I don't think. Yeah, there it is. Um, so at the, you know, down at the bottom, it's at the bottom of everything because it's conditional logic. It's um, adding up so the client can see exactly how many, how much money is it's happening. So how many people? Zero, only one person, there's no extra money. What style of collaborator will you be on this project? This, pro this people love this question. Cool, I'll collaborate with you and trust your judgment. Reluct and that doesn't add anything. Reluctant, I know I'm slow to respond with deliverables and approvals. That adds 500. Involved, I have a specific idea about the end project and I'll know it when I see it. That adds 1,000. Exacting, I have champagne taste. I want the site exactly how I want it. That adds 2,000. And the funny thing is, is people know if you get to that reluctant question and they know they're a pain in the neck, they'll laugh. <laughs> and if they know they have champagne taste, they'll usually admit it. They might say, well, but I don't have the budget for that. But the good thing is you've got it on the table that they know that they're going to be picky uni. So, you know, it, you, I've had somebody go through it and say, but I'm a nonprofit. I, I can't really, you know, have champagne taste, even though I have champagne taste. So we get through three quarters of it, and she's been stewing about this. She says, go back and add champagne taste. So um, you get them to understand how they contribute to the price of the website. And, and it breaks the ice, and it's funny. So, um, so then... Let's see, we need to select something. So maybe they're involved. This is like, well, no, that's not quite right. That's not quite right kind of person. Um, logo and branding, do they already have it? If they'll provide everything, then that doesn't add anything to the site. If they need a refresh, and you can adjust these um, prices according to your prices because you'll be getting a PDF and a Word document, so you can put your own prices in. But um, say they need a rebrand, a logo and branding, and um, as long as it's pretty simple, uh, you know, we'll just do that $2,000. Website, photography, and graphics. Will the client provide all the images? Well, you know they never do, so that's usually a, um, a trick question. Client needs help to find the images. I mean, there are a few clients that might come with everything t together, but not very many. So then you go, okay, do you need help getting the hero image? Yes. Additional images on the site? Yes. Uh, do you need a recommendation for headshots? That wouldn't be anything, you know, zero, zero, if they needed that. Mobile site. As long as um, they're, they're not having any kind of special requirements that's gonna, that are going to make us have to do a whole lot of extra programming for mobile, doesn't add anything to the site. But if they need something completely different on the mobile, then we're going to charge extra for it. And usually it's like a restaurant or something where you need to get the, the 
phone numbers and directions right up front where you wouldn't do it on the main site. So say we're going to not charge them for that. Already it's up to $4,500. Then we get to content. Well, we really pride ourselves on the brand story thing, and a lot of people really like that, and that's why they've chosen us. We charge $1,500 to help them develop their brand story for their home page. Little do they know we kind of have to do that anyway. I mean, you know, but we're going to really do it in earnest and do a good job, and so that adds, uh, well, that isn't where we are yet. Um, the number of pages, let's say 10 to 15 pages, and then the home page, brand story, 1,500. So now we're up to 7,550, but remember they were kind of the, the I'll know it when I see it people. So, um, but I don't worry about the price so far. Are they going to do need content? We'll provide designer finished copy for each page. Are you laughing? Who does that, right? Nobody. So they're going to need help. They, they might use their existing copy from their website, but even if they do, they're going to need some help with copywriting. And so, you know, we add whatever they need. Minor say they're going to provide it, and we make edits. Um, because remember, we've already done the home page, so this is the rest of it. So say we just make, they provide the, the copy for the rest of it, and we make minor edits. And so now we're up to 7,900. We'll need the, final, the following features. A blog, mm, no, no extra. Contact form, not extra. Additional forms, they need more forms. Hello, those are extra. You know the client that all of a sudden you've got a HIPAA compliant 42 item form that they spring on you. No. So when you go over that, okay, well if you need any others, then this is the price. And for a certain number of items, event calendars, event calendars with ticketing, photo gallery, or pro pro portfolios. So it goes over all those things that we kind of forget about and that the clients remember later that, oh yeah, I needed an event manager. And they hate to come back and add it to their price later. So we're covering all this. So then if they come back and later they want the event manager, it's like, oh, remember we didn't price that in the website cost estimator. And it just breaks the ice and they don't feel like you're trying to get one over on them. So you just kind of go along. It, if it's a real estate site, then it's going to, you know, some of these questions, if it's an online store, then it's going to ask them a whole lot of other questions. Let's see, the store. Well, we don't need to go into everything, but it, um, it'll take care of this. Do you want search engine optimization for keywords on your site? How many keywords do you want optimized? And, um, and then there's some, so if you said, well, maybe five on their main pages. Um, and again, that's changing their, their amount. Technical items to discuss. This is where I just have a conversation about that, um, that we do training. It's not extra. One training session is an extra. And um, we, we do hosting and maintenance. And what about email? Where is your email hosted? And you know that kind of thing. And then we, I say, well, this comes to $8,400. And then they freak out or not. But <laughs> they might say, oh, well, that's a lot. And then we can go back and see, well, what, what maybe don't you need? And we'll go back to that, that um, the thousand dollar that they're kind of a I'll know it when I see it person, and I can take that off. And so then they'll say, oh, well, okay, that'll that'll work, and um, and so it'll be end up being seventy four hundred dollars. And you know anywhere from six, I've geared this towards our prices for small businesses. And, you know, our average price for a small business is about, um, you know, anywhere between six and eight for, you know, just small business sites. So that works for us. So you can do this and put your own prices in, higher or lower, to have that work for you. But what this does is it opens the door 
for you to be able to go back and talk to them about change orders or how they're being. Because if we get into this and they did not buy a champagne taste and they start wanting you to edit the um, sign in the the font in the in the um, email newsletter sign up box. You can say, um, yeah, that would be champagne taste with the cherry on top. I said we're not, you know, we can't do that unless you want to go ahead and add more money to it. And so they they may also come back with other things, but they don't mind because they have helped you come up with the price. So at the end of this, they're like, well, 8,400 is like, oh, that's too much. Um, you know, take a few things off. How about this? But remember, then now we're not going to do da, 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 da. And they, yes, that will work. That's fine. They've just agreed to work with you. And so then you only have to go back and put it into your proposal software, write it up, and send it to them like the next day, and you're, you've got a new client. It's really quite magical, but it takes all of those steps. And if you don't have a good website yourself, this isn't going to work. So because it's all related that you have to be the expert and, have, and make them feel confident and competent that you're the person and that they know that you're going to call them back and how you work and stuff. And if you do that in those appointments, by the time you get to, well, how much is, does it cost? You're going to go through it with them, and they're going to choose their own price. And if they can't do it, you know, we do a cup, we do some little side projects where we do something like we'll work on a site for 15 hours, and we'll see how far we get. You know, so if it's really somebody that isn't appropriate, you know, doesn't have any funds, then there are other ways you can do can work because we slide slide those little projects in between our big projects that the, just to have cash flow coming in because we can get those done pretty quickly. If we have a big, you know, big, bigger projects, you, you know, may be having longer times before you get paid. But, um, but then you can go, you know, go into that mode and say, well, if this is really too high, I can either refer you to somebody or we can do a very uh, hourly thing and do this, this, and this, but it will have to be like we're just moving on it. And so they can choose that or a referral to somebody that has prices that are less. So that's um, the website cost estimator. And you'll get the pricing websites like a pro PDF and Word version, but there's also, you can buy this, the, um, the Gravity Forms version. You'll get information uh, when you get the uh, PDF um, by email. So questions? <laughs>